everyone, Wilbur here. We're back and the topic of today is family vlogging channels. They have been a thing on YouTube for quite some time now. You get to watch a family go about their day-to-day -day lives, you get to watch their kids grow up, and you almost feel like you're a part of their family sometimes because they've been doing it for so long. You get to see glimpses into their everyday lives. But sometimes those glimpses go a little bit deeper and it shows maybe a darker side of the family that they didn't want you to know about and or didn't think was a big deal. This past week, there's been a lot of talk of family vlogging channels. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about Eight Passengers. It is a family vlogging channel run by Ruby and Kevin Frank, along with their six children. Their ages range from 17 to six years old. And this past week, Ruby uploaded a video to her channel, and her son, who is 15 years old, shared some information that is very... It was very alarming to a lot of people. We're going to look at a piece of that video where the son talks about um, his very unusual punishment to his misbehaviors. Um, so we're going to look at that and then we are also going to be looking at Ruby's Instagram because she took two Instagram stories to defend herself and along with her husband so we will also be looking at that and seeing what they have to say for themselves so let's first see what what all of this is about the last videos that we did on electronics um you guys saw that i took abby's phone away i still don't know how she has it gotten that bag <laughs> abby went so in our house, we when we take something away, it's they because they have shown that they are not responsible enough to manage it. And so we don't just turn around and give it back as soon as they start acting good. It has we, to be consistent. It has to so I know it's kind of hard to probably hear what the son said, but he said it has to be consistent, meaning that he is aware that when you misbehave to get something back that was taken away, such as, you know, a phone, a laptop, a tablet, whatever it may be, um, you have to show consistently good behavior because I know when I was younger, like, that's how it was. Like, you can't just, like, be good for one full 24 hours and then you get it back. You have to show that you learned your lesson. Be consistent over a minimum, minimum of six months, and that's showing up consistent in every aspect that's, of their life. That is... I don't, maybe it's just me. I'm not a parent, I don't know. But to me, having something taken away and show that you are consistently, you have consistently learned from the behavior that, you know, caused you to lose an item that you care about, such as a phone, we'll go with a phone. Um, six months is a long time. You know, it's, I, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it all depends on what, I guess, the, behavior was that started it all but to me six months is a long time to take away electronics from a teenager and maybe sometimes hey that's what they need you've done it too many times but it seems like they are confused as to why they haven't gotten it back they're like we've been showing up we know the rules but she still isn't willing to give it back and she's she's the mom she can do whatever she wants it just seems like as the three of them are confused on why she hasn't gotten it back. She clearly, to the other ones, and I know they're children, so they maybe not, they don't see it as much, but they are confused. And if it, to me, it reaches the point, or six months is a long time because, you know, we all have short attention spans. For the most part, a lot of kids may even have forgotten why they had their electronics taken away in the first place. Like, six months is a long time. <laughs> That's a new rule. That's a new rule. Oh, I just... Um, so she just has no reason for it to be six months. She just has always decided that it would be six months. She's never told them that. Otherwise, I feel like if they knew that whatever they wanted, such as their phone or computer, was going to be taken away for six months, I think that... I mean, to me, I'd be like, oh, crap, I don't want to do anything bad. Like, six months is a long time to go without, you know, my phone. 
especially as a teenager, I was obsessed with my phone. I'm sure, you know, for us that grew up with cell phones, we know. Minimum of six months. Good Have months. I ever given Goodness. something back more than six, less than six months? Um. I my phone no. for like a day. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been uh, sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> and they gave my And she's laughing at this. She she's as a punishment to your child, you took away his bedroom. That is not, you had nothing else to take away, so you took away his privacy and his right to a bed. And you had him sleep on a bean bag for, oh, for over half a year. Half a year. That is not a punishment. You do not take away a bedroom. As human beings, we also have a right to privacy. And he has a right to a bed and to be able to close a door and yeah, maybe sometimes kids, you know, they can abuse that privacy. And, and I have heard of parents taking away the bedroom door as a form of punishment. And, you know, I may think that's too far. But taking away their entire bedroom, that is going way too far. That's just, I couldn't even imagine. Room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give yes. you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. He doesn't even know. It's been so long since he has had his bedroom taken away that he can't even remember what the misbehavior was. So he's not even learning from anything because he doesn't even know what he did wrong to begin with. He can't remember. It's been so long. You took him. I understand maybe. No, I don't understand. I was going to say maybe make him sleep in the living room, but that's a weird thing. You took away his entire bedroom. He's a 15-year-old kid. I think he was 14. He, he just turned 15 this year, so 14 years old, and he has no bedroom. None. No privacy. I mean, and in general, they have no privacy. Everything is put online for millions to see, and she sees nothing wrong with this. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. Has his sunglasses on. Okay. T to me, that just sounds like sibling behavior, like pranking your younger sibling. I was like, we're not going to Disneyland. And <laughs> he started crying and hitting me. And then he went back to bed in tears and then... Uh, so that that was that was not <laughs> the reason you lost your room, but that was... Well, the other reason is because I pointed a BB gun at his face. And that is not okay. That is not okay. No, you should never point a BB gun at anyone. However, to me, why does he have a BB gun in the first place? You know, if you don't want him, if, if, if what he is going to do is so terrible, like he's apparently a troubled child, she does go into this, that apparently he has a lot of behavioral issues, then don't give that child a BB gun. Like, it's, it's very simple. The BB gun at his face and hung him on the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That is sad. And clearly he is, you know, she's being an older brother. You know, older brothers torment their siblings all the time. Is that going too far? Of course. Again, like I'm going to say, like we all say, that is not a big enough crime to no longer have a bed. He had nowhere to sleep. He's... I don't know if they just didn't put up his bed, if he, I don't, it's just, I just couldn't imagine, just, he's 14 years old, and you're, you walk out into your living room, you know, I'm sure the kitchen is maybe somewhere around there, and you just see your 14-year-old son sleeping on a bean bag because you took away his right to a bed, and you think that that is, that's fine, that that's a normal response is to take away his bedroom because you've taken away everything else. So I guess take away his right to sleep in a bed, which is not okay.
basically, <laughs> basically, that. Chad. Oh, like the day I got home, too. <laughs> Chad came home from Anasazi and. So they had sent him away for, I believe it was 10 weeks. They sent him away for 10 weeks to a wilderness program for, I believe it was for his misbehavior. So for two and a half months, he was away from his family, away from his, his house, away from his bed. And he comes back to no bedroom. He probably was sleeping in like a cabin in the wilderness program where he had a bed. He had a bed at the wilderness program and he came home to his house to where he is supposed to be comfortable and safe and he has nowhere to sleep because his parents think that that is okay. Um, and Russell was like, I want to try junking the basketball and I lifted him up on the and he was And he <laughs> and left him there for all three minutes and he was just hanging on Do there. Do you think it's funny because... And then I walk out. If you think it's funny then you... That was seven months ago. Maybe you need longer without a bedroom. It, no, it was not funny. Chad cool. showed that he was not able to manage himself sharing a bedroom with Russell. So when we moved... Um, the bigger room in the basement was automatically his, and I didn't have a room, but we like put one on hold for me. So a lot of you are like, hey, that's not fair because Chad got the bigger, the lesser bedroom. Oh, I don't think it matters who has the bigger bedroom or who has the smaller bedroom. It's the fact that you didn't even give your child a room. His room was put on hold, like he's renting the place and he had to put down a deposit. That's your child. He he should have had a room. Whatever. Give as a I guess as a punishment. Give the younger child the bigger room. Fine. But give your child a bedroom. Give him a bed to sleep on. Like he should not be sleeping on a beanbag in the living room. And and. Uh, and Russell got the, the bigger bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> Russell got the big bedroom, and Chai got the the smaller bedroom. Smaller. And Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom. But what you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. And you say that like that's okay. That that how is not saying it out loud like that that's that she doesn't see anything wrong with that that oh he didn't as you guys know when we moved he didn't even have a bedroom. Like it's funny that your child didn't have a room or a bed to call his own? I mean, the living room where everybody can just walk in and out, and he had nowhere to call his own space. He's 14, 15 years old. Like, that's a very important time for kids to have privacy. And he just got the bedroom back, and it's because he's shown up consistently without bullying the kids. Chad hasn't had a flip phone, a smartphone, any kind of phone, and it's been over a year. Mm -hmm. And, um, I still have no intention of returning a phone. Abby, we took the phone. I, like I said, I understand taking away phones as a punishment, but for over a year, that, that seems extreme. Let me know, it, it may not be extreme, but to me, I, I find that like, how much better can he do, you know, on a daily basis? for over a year and still not get his phone back. Away from Abby um, November. in November. So her phone has been taken away for the last eight months? And, and you may you may never get the phone back. Probably not. Um, if I was to go back and redo anything in parenting, it would be not to give the kids a phone. That's all she would do. Not, not, not take away her her child's right to a bed, but she also, as a punishment to her five-year-old daughter, because her five-year-old daughter, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, did not, or forgot to pack her lunch for school. She goes to school, forgot to take her lunch, and the teacher texted Ruby and said, hey, your daughter forgot her lunch, is there any way you can, you know, come by and drop it off? And Ruby said, no. I want her to basically starve today to learn a lesson on remembering to pack your lunch. She's five. 
She's five years old and her mom doesn't want her, doesn't want to bring her food to school to teach her a lesson. And she also said that I hope no kids give her food. So this really shows her. So this mom is willing to take away food and beds as a punishment to her children. And that is beyond, just so beyond. Basically no technology over the summer. And now I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally like told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Because, because they're really they say some pretty people. messed up stuff. I don't even know where they live. <laughs> they're pretty far away. So, summer goal. These kids have no friends. And I believe it's because the mom, since the oldest was 12 years old, has been shoving a camera in their face and documenting every aspect of their lives. And there's no way that these kids, that's gotta be so hard on them. They have no privacy, none. And I've seen videos of the kids saying, the mom coming up and talking to them about something, the kids saying, I don't want you to film this. And clearly she still put this up because I am able to say that I heard the kids say, please don't put this up. She doesn't value her kids' privacy. They are basically dancing circus monkeys for her to make her money. And she sees nothing wrong with that. Her husband sees nothing wrong with that. The kids have no say in what gets put up online. She can say like, oh, I asked them. They're minors. They... They don't have to say, you're their mom. You can put up whatever you want. And I'm really curious to see what the future of YouTube is gonna hold when it comes to showing children. I know there already is, you know, YouTube took a step with making it to where you either say if a channel is for kids or not for kids, but there's a lot of, there's, you know, loose ends with that. And basically, if you make content directly directed at children so they don't get ads, that's different. This is technically not directed at children. It's directed at adults. You know, adults watch this and kids. Um, but I'm just curious to know if in the future YouTube is going to take a stance on what parents put, what parents can and can't put online for their kids. Because these kids are basically the whole reason that they have the money that they do. And the kids don't really, I, I don't think, really see much of it. You know, maybe they live in a nice house, but one of them doesn't even have a bedroom. So that money's not really, it means nothing to him. She's taken away, basically, I mean, they don't want, they have no friends. The one girl says, I don't even know where my friends live. Meaning she's never been over to their house. And it, I, I assume she's 11, 13. I was over at my friend's houses all the time at that age. And I think that, you know, from the ages of like 10 to the rest of your life, having friends is very beneficial and really can teach you a lot about, you know, just social lessons that outside of your family you can't get. And because these kids, everything is documented online and kids are mean. Um, they just, instead of, don't want friends. And that's really sad. It's really sad. Become the best athlete I possibly can. How do you feel about not having any friends? Sucks, but I don't feel safe or accepted in any friend group. Because the mom has put everything online for anyone to see, and she didn't even think about this when, when she doesn't think about this when she puts things out online, when she, you know, exploits her children and she just doesn't think about how this will affect them. She just thinks about how it will affect her wallet. So, yeah. That's really vulnerable of you to say that on camera because you don't have to film that. He's not filming that, you are. No, it's true though, and I've told my friends that as well, so. This kid is, I have only seen, what, we're probably seven minutes in this video, I don't even know how long this video is, like five minutes. Um, he is very well spoken, he seems to get it, he 
said he told his friends, I no longer want to hang out with you because you're saying things about what you see online. Maybe they were saying things about his mom or his dad or his siblings because they saw it online. And he chose to cut those people out of his life. And that is a very adult thing. That's a very big thing that a lot of people, even adults, don't know they can do. I don't know. This kid it just doesn't seem like the problem child that they're making him out to be. And again, I'm just going based off of what I've seen in this video. But he seems like a very smart kid. What I have seen, look, when you make these choices with your family to take things away, as a parent, you really do want them to have these things. And it's been so, so, so difficult to take a phone away, to take a bedroom away. How does she say that she's literally equaling a phone and a bedroom? Like, that, the fact that you would even, I wouldn't, I can't even fathom that taking a bedroom away would even, like, cross most parents' minds. Like, oh, you've been, you know, you said you did something stupid. Better take your entire right to privacy and a warm bed to sleep away. A warm bed to sleep in away from you so you learn your lesson. Like, that is just such cruel and unusual punishment for sure to take iPads away, to take access away. Like, it hurts me just as much as it hurts my kids. Like, you don't seem too bothered by it. Like, I understand that it probably hurts to take away things that they enjoy, such as, I don't know, a bed. Um, but maybe you should sleep in the living room for seven months and see how you feel. Like, em like feeling bad, like I feel bad. So then what do you mean you have no intention of giving us them back? I have no intention of giving you a phone back. Yeah, like, it doesn't seem you like, feel bad about that. Oh. See, this kid is so, like, he's like, you just say it. You just take it away. You don't seem to really care. There's no end result in all of this. We, you know, you film every aspect of our lives. You've already taken away our right to privacy. Can't we at least have a phone? <laughs> I'm, I guess what I'm saying is initially, I feel like, oh, you're getting, like you're showing up responsible. It's been three weeks and you're doing awesome. But seven months, seven months without a bedroom. I even give her, I mean, I'm gonna give her nothing, but if this was a month, I mean, people would still be upset, of course, but to go, Seven months, and and actually even before that, like I said, he was at the wilderness retreat for 10 weeks. And so for nine and a half months, mostly an entire year of his life, he has not had a bedroom and a bed to sleep in. And it's like, I wanna give the phone back to tell you, I see that you're making, you know, um, uh, that you're making progress, that you're putting in an effort. And every time I would do that, all it would do is enable you to go back to old behavior. And mm -hmm. so it was like, oh, just show up really good for three weeks, get your stuff back, and you're back into the old habits. And I'm not- That's what kids do, that's very common. What I'm saying is I don't have a timeline to say, okay, Chad just has five more months to go and then he well, gets a phone back. I said specific months. I said consistent. Yeah, right. Which is what she said. Consistent. He knows that, like consistent. But if there's no end goal, I mean, yeah, should he be consistently a good person and do the right thing? Yes, but kids mess up. Kids do dumb things. <laughs> and take you away. He's, he just got his bedroom back. I'm just still blown away by that. So what I'm saying is I haven't given it much thought. But yeah, sharing with everyone the fact that you don't have a group of friends, that's really hard. I'm sorry mm -hmm. that you're in that situation. It's your fault. And I'm proud of you for cutting off with friends who make inappropriate yeah. jokes and who are inappropriate. Mm -hmm. <sighs> So that was that video where their 15 year old son is sharing how he doesn't have a bedroom. He has, he had nowhere to sleep besides a bean bag in the living room for seven months. 
Okay, and now we are going to look at her Instagram story where she addresses the video we just saw and see what she has to say for herself. I'm going to do a video and post it tomorrow, but I think I'm just going to do it right now. I'm just going to talk about uh, the responses to today's video. Uh, by the way, this was posted on May 29th right here so if you haven't been oh here's Kevin he's gonna hi guys wants to talk to so today's video we posted about um, I didn't know Chad was gonna start talking and explain what um, some of the outcomes of his behaviors have been and he did and I told him I said you know we can cut that out we can edit it if you want and he's, that doesn't make him look bad that makes you look bad like, no He's like, it's fine. I'm totally fine having it in. I was like, all right. But again, he has no say. He's 15. You're his mom. You should know what is okay and not okay to post. That's great. So I didn't anticipate all the upset. Of course you didn't. You thought you did nothing wrong. However, listening to all of your comments and your feedback and your feelings around things, it totally makes sense to me why you're angry and why you're upset. Yeah, I mean, we totally understand how it must look from your perspective, but... How do you not see it from your perspective, that what you did was wrong? How do you not see that? I'm not a parent, I know that's wrong! I don't think anyone should have their bed taken away! Anybody! So, long before we started YouTube, there were a lot of behavioral and emotional challenges that we were dealing with with our kids. And we've been consulting with uh, mental health and emotional health professionals for years. And the things that we show and share and the things that many of you are criticizing and calling abusive are actually things that mental health professionals have uh, counseled us to do. Who? is telling them to take away their child's bed and bedroom and that is okay. If if that is the case, then you as his parents should know that that was not okay. That that is not a reasonable punishment. Yeah, I... So... And it's great that you can pa pass the blame on to someone else. That's really good. I, I think I understand where some people are coming from. They're like, oh, abusive parents don't give their kids beds. And I totally agree with that. It It's all on the motive. I know there are lots of children out there whose parents are neglectful and are making sure, making sure that their addictions are taken care of, but then the kids are, you know, without food. But we're not talking about those parents. Yes. Are parents worse? Yes. But what you are doing can be classified as abusive behavior. You took away your son's bed and bedroom for it wasn't like just like a week, you did it for months. And you also came on camera and said that you didn't want, you wanted your daughter to starve that day because your five-year-old forgot to pack her lunch. Five-year-olds forget everything. That is your job as her mother to Pack her her lunch since you have the freedom, because I assume, I don't know for sure, but this is her job. She's just on YouTube. And she has the freedom to be around her kids all the time. So pack your five-year-old a lunch and make sure she has it before she leaves to school. Not punish her by telling her, I hope that she starved to learn a lesson. And I, again, didn't say this, but... The teacher, oh my god, she has a great teacher. The teacher had a parent-teacher conference to talk to the mom and be like, is she being abused? Because my guess is when the teacher is like, hey, she forgot her lunch, she probably expected a text back of like, oh, I'll be right there. Not, oh, okay, well, make sure, make sure she doesn't, you know, I don't want her to eat. I want her to learn a lesson. As a teacher, as a person, I would see that as abusive also. So I'm glad that the teacher did the right thing. So a lot of times, you know, you never know, even if you're wrong, it is best to speak up and defend children when you think that they are being abused. We got accused of child abuse when we sent Chad to Anasazi. Guess there is a lot of, there, there's a lot of, <laughs> I, not all of them are bad. Not all wilderness retreats are bad, but there has been a lot of them that have come under fire and needed to close down because 
children were being abused there. You know, you're putting your children's safety in strangers' hands, basically. And I know that's kind of what school is, you know, it, it is. But this is, you're putting them out in the middle of nowhere to learn from their behavior. And a lot of people, unfortunately, um, abuse their power over those kids. But the first thing... And I'm not saying that he was sent there, you know, they might, they didn't know that, but I don't know. I personally do not, I know I'm not a parent, but I just don't think them sending him away was the right answer. You know, you're sending him, I, and I guess maybe sometimes that's just what it comes down to, but they did that and still took his bedroom away. That they did was take a bed away. They, they don't have beds. So Chad slept on the hard ground for months and it's, you know, it's run by psychologists and therapists. And if, if not having a bed was psychologically damaging, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't have suggested that they wouldn't be doing that. They'd be given all the kids beds, but they don't. So we just want to. So then you kept up with that once he got home. So you sent him away for two months and you kept up with that behavior. What is the point of even sending him away if, if he didn't even learn from it? All of you know, and I think most of the people who are upset are actually children, like teenagers. Um, although I'm shocked. Absolutely not. So we've learned through experience that when people get triggered or get upset by something, it usually is because that something means something about them. And so if this experience has been hard for you to watch, how we've um, parented our kids and how we've held calm. Love how it's, it's, it's our fault as the viewer. Well, clearly you're, you are hurt in your own life. Therefore, that's why you have an issue with my parenting. Taking away food and beds to me is that's not normal parenting. And if it comes down to it and, and I guess fine or your kids and maybe that's what made them so well behaved they just don't I mean and they're not happy you take away a bed for months that can't be a fun life to live you haven't had a phone in a year that's not a normal teenage life you took away their right to friends because you decided that this is what you wanted to do share every aspect of your life online and again you put you Ruby chose to put that of her son saying, I haven't had a bed in seven months. She chose to put that out online. And then now that she's getting criticism and backlash for it, she's like, why? I don't understand. Like, I don't deserve that. Don't put it out if you don't want criticism. <laughs> consequences with them and place firm boundaries and, and held them to those expectations and, and encourage them and reward them when they show good judgments um if you're triggered by all of that then uh that's probably a good chance for you to look at yourself and ask what about me is this situation telling me it's telling me that i'm glad that they're not my parents why why am i upset by how they are choosing to parent yeah, I had someone... I'm also upset that she broadcasts her children's lives all over the internet and they have no say about it. Hey, I don't need you to validate my anger. I need you to be a good parent to those kids. And I'm thinking, do you see how personal these um, comments are? That she needs me? So this comment, I need you... So, so you're, you're using one comment as an example. One, it's not a great argument. Who to be a good parent to, to those kids. So it's almost like she's claiming the kids as her own. And that, so that's why I understand the upset. That's why I understand the anger is because if you really see these kids as your own and then. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video where family vloggers, you know, you watch them, you watch their kids grow up. You feel like you're a part of the family. 
that's kind of the whole point of it. And that, and I mean, yeah, money, <laughs> but for the viewer, that's what it is. You grow up, you watch these kids grow up and you're excited to see. And then to find out that behind the scenes that the son hasn't had a bed for months, that's sad. You feel for him. You see me parent them in a way you wouldn't. And yeah, every parent is different. That's fine. You can parent your kids however need be, but you're going to get backlash when you do things that are out of the ordinary and seem wrong, because it is wrong. Of course you're going to be angry. That makes so much sense. And they're not anybody's children but mine and Kevin's, and we are doing a really good job of listening to them and having people help us who are professional and who have given us some really really we're listening to them again like i said earlier hey mom can you not put this online and if i showed up irresponsible around my home if i showed up irresponsible around my vehicle if i showed up irresponsible with my children or your job or my job or anything that thing could still be taken away yeah and you showed up irresponsible. I'm going to stop it there. You showed up irresponsible to your job online of how you treat your kids. And as of right now, you seem to be kind of canceled. You have taken off comments on your YouTube channel. Your like to dislike ratio is nowhere near it was. And people don't like you right now. So, I don't know. Maybe come on in a little while and it might be better. I don't know, but... People won't forget that this is how you treat your kids and that you're validating yourself for that. All right, guys, that's the end of this very long video. There was a lot to say. This is a crazy situation that I'm very saddened to hear. I hope only the best for those kids. I hope that the mom realizes the error of her ways and that she gives these kids more privacy and never takes away another bedroom. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really, really liked it, please subscribe. Uh, let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. And until my next video, I will see you guys then. Bye!